Here I've got a nice problem from a teacher's geometry Olympiad from the year 2020 from a region in Russia. So we'll start with the square, which I've labeled A, B, C, D. And then our first thing will be to circumscribe a circle about this square. Okay, so let's get that circle on the board. Okay, so that looks good. Next, we wanna pick four points, and I'll call them E, F, G, H. E and F will be along this side length A, B. And then G and H will be along this smaller arc AB, and they're chosen so that we make a square up there, and that square will be labeled EFGH. Okay, so let's get that drawn. So that's good. Now our picture is complete, and we need to talk about our final goal, which will be to find the ratio of the side length of the larger square with the smaller square. Okay, let's see maybe how we can do that. I'll start by introducing some notation. So let's set x equal the side length of square a, b, c, d, and we'll set y equal to the side length of square e, f, g, h, and then we'll set r equal to the radius of the circle, which is in this picture. And let's see. With that notation, we can rephrase our goal pretty easily. And our goal will be to determine x over y. So that should be just a number. Okay, so let's see how we can achieve that goal. Well, we're gonna introduce some triangles into this situation in order to write r in terms of x, and then in order to write x in terms of y. So let's start with a triangle that will be used to write y and, or sorry, r in terms of x. So I'll start here at the center of the circle, which is about right there. And then I'll draw a line to the side length of the square this way, and then a line to the vertex of the square this way. And then it's pretty easy to measure these lengths. So this length right here will be exactly x over two, because all the way across would be the side length of the square, which we determined to be x. And then this up here likewise will be x over two. And then finally, this guy right here is clearly r, it's just the radius of the circle. So let's see, from this picture, which maybe I'll put like a, orange dot to say we're making a calculation from this picture and the Pythagorean theorem, given that this is a right angle, we have x squared over four plus x squared over four equals r squared. That's because it's x over two quantity squared plus x over two quantity squared. But let's see, that gives us r squared equals x squared over two. Now we could solve that for r if we wanted to, but I think it's just as easy to leave it as r squared because as we'll see, r will only show up as a square. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's see what triangle we can introduce into this situation in order to compare x and y. Okay, so I think maybe the best one looks like this. Let's draw a vertical line through gf down to this line right here. So it's gonna intersect right here, then across and up like this. Okay, so we've created another triangle. And now we just have to find the measurements of that triangle. So let's start looking at the length of this segment. So if we project it up onto our little square, we'll see that it's exactly half the side length of our little square. So that tells us this segment right here has length y over two. Then we can measure this distance as well pretty easily. So we've got a distance of x over two from this transposed over here, and then a distance of y from the side length of the small square. So this is x over two plus y. And then finally, this guy right here is the radius again because it goes from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Okay, so that's good. So maybe we'll use like a green dot to show that we're doing the calculation from that. And we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem again. 
So let's see, we have y over two quantity squared plus x over two plus y quantity squared equals r squared. But let's recall that r squared was x squared over two. So we can make that replacement. Okay, so now let's multiply this out a little bit. Notice we'll get y squared over four for this term plus x squared over four plus xy plus y squared equals x squared over two. So there's our relationship between x and y in this quadratic equation. So far we've determined that x and y satisfy the following quadratic equation. Now we'll like move some things around so this is easier to work with. So let's first notice that we can take this y squared over four, add it to this y squared, and that will give us five y squared over four. So that's a good simplification. Furthermore, we can take this x over two and move it over, and we'll have x squared over four minus x over two, that will give us minus x squared over four. Then finally, this plus xy term doesn't really change at all. So now we've got that, which is maybe a little bit easier to work with. Now from here, maybe we'll multiply by four just to clear denominators. That gives us five y squared plus four xy minus x squared equals zero. Now we wanna check if that will factor. So if it will factor, it'll factor involving five y and x and then y and x. That's because we need 5y times y to be y squared, and then x times x to be x squared. We just need to determine if we have a plus here, a minus here, a plus here, or a minus here. And looking at it a little bit, you'll see what will work is a plus here and a minus here. So let's notice that this factor will give us that x and y are opposites. So one is negative, but that doesn't make any sense in our situation. So we are only given a solution via this factor. So in other words, we know 5y equals x, but that can be easily rearranged to find our goal, which is this ratio of side lengths. And we'll see that x over y is equal to five. And that was the final goal of this whole problem. And that's a good place to stop.